Dajiahao, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Hu Guo Da Wang. Today I want to go through a timeline of the coronavirus in China. So first a few things about this timeline. It's color coded so it's easier to look at. Blue items are general items. Green items are proactive things that are generally a positive influence on the situation. Beige things are new information. And purple are when the virus has reached other countries. This timeline only focuses on China. Otherwise, it would be way too big. Some items say the word later, which means that they happened at that time but they weren't known about or reported on until later. Also, a few of the items in here were reported to have happened on two different days, usually right next to each other. This is because you have reporting in the West and the East, which can be a one day time difference. And sometimes the people reporting will use their local time and sometimes they'll use the time in China, for example. So some few items have a little bit of confusion as to when exactly they happened. For those days, I either went with the day that was reported the most or I made a little span between the two days saying, we know what happened on one of these two days. In my comment section for my videos, I have seen some of the strangest conspiracy theories and wacky ideas about this event. And so I wanted to go through a timeline and clear up a lot of this confusion that's going on out there. I've heard that this is being handled much worse than SARS, much slower than SARS, the same as SARS, better than SARS, all these different theories. It's overwhelming. One of the comments I got was that the investigation was extremely slow and that the beginning stages were very slow. And so we're going to go through this together and take a look. Okay, so this is the timeline. Around November 6th or later is the first time that we know of that there was animal to human transmission. This is an assumption. And the reason that we know that is that the incubation period can be up to 24 days. We now know that there was a first case not related to the market on December 1st. That person must have got infected no earlier than 24 days before that. This is a little bit fuzzy. This is just sort of an assumption guesswork, but it does give you an idea of when this thing actually started as far as we know now, somewhere in November of 2019. Then obviously the spreading begins. For a while, we thought the first case was December 8th. Later, the market in Wuhan was declared to be infectious somewhere around the 10th. So that seems to line up with this. The Wuhan health authorities later refer to the 12th as the beginning of the outbreak. Nothing else develops that we know of. And then somewhere around the 21st of December, patients start coming into the hospital with pneumonia. And then here we see on the 26th, this is when Dr. Zhang first noticed that four of these cases seem to be pneumonia of an unknown cause. The way that they're diagnosed as being from an unknown source is that they don't make progress for three to five days. At least one was related to the market. There's multiple reports about the day that she informed the hospital, but it's either the 26th or the 27th. She told the hospital, which is what she's supposed to do. On the 27th, the hospital reported it to the district CDC. So that marks the beginning of when the district health authorities were aware. So December 27th, it has been reported to the authorities. Over the next few days, three more cases come. All of them are related to the market. 28th of December, the hospital also reports it to the Hubei Health Commission and the Wuhan Health Commission. Already on the 28th, we can say that the district knows, the city knows, and the province knows. On the 29th, an investigation begins. Wuhan CDC, the district CDC, and the hospital. Six of the seven patients were transferred to an infectious disease hospital. One of the patients refused. Provincial, municipal, and district disease control centers started getting reports about this also on the 29th. Also around the 29th is when they started quarantining people. Within 24 hours of the investigation, the Wuhan CDC reports the cluster of people to China CDC. So this is the day we can say for sure the national health authorities knew about the situation. That's the 30th of December. Wuhan also issued warnings to the hospitals. These were written warnings. These warnings that were issued to the hospitals began leaking on the internet immediately and Wuhan local media reported on those warnings. This is also the day that Dr. Lee warned his friends in a WeChat group who are also medical professionals, telling them to just tell their friends and family, but don't tell anybody else and don't let it get out of the group. Now, this is the earliest report of medical staff being infected, but this report comes from one place 
that doesn't have any sources listed. So I can't confirm if this is true. The next day, the 31st, this is the beginning of the government telling people what's going on. China CDC sends down more experts to help the Wuhan CDC. The Wuhan Health Commission also issued its first warning to the Chinese public. CCTV reported it at least twice that day. The hospitals in Wuhan had an emergency symposium on treatments of patients with pneumonia of an unknown cause. The warnings that had been leaking over the internet for the last couple of days were confirmed publicly to be true. The Wuhan Health Commission also publicly suggests wearing masks. This is also the day that the China CDC notifies the WHO. So that's about five or six days after the first suspected case, less than a week. So this is the first day that we can say the international health authorities are aware. To those of you who are saying this is pretty much the same as the SARS outbreak or slower, I wanna share with you the difference. This is the first case and this is when they notified the WHO. I want you to see if this were the first case of SARS, where on this timeline China notified the WHO. Ready? Here, three months after the first case. This is when they would have notified the WHO. January 1st, market closed and they started searching for infected animals as well as disinfecting the area and that kind of stuff. Much of the public still didn't know what was going on, although there had been some announcements from the government the day before. So I wanna just quickly go over this beginning part again because this is very crucial. This is a major area that people seem to get totally wrong. The cases were reported to a hospital by Dr. Zhang. Within 24 hours, the district authorities knew. Within 48 hours of that, the province knew, the city knew, the district knew. Within three days, there was an investigation launched. Within 48 hours of that investigation starting, the World Health Organization was notified and the public started to be notified. By January 2nd, they had ruled out the flu, the avian flu, the denovirus, SARS, and MERS. The 3rd of January is when Dr. Lee signed his basically NDA, promising not to tell more people about what he thought was going on. Technical protocols were released for Wuhan. The NHC notified various counties and regions. So they're starting to tell the rest of China government what's happening. And also the virus was identified. A SARS expert in Hong Kong said that there was no proof of human to human transmission. This entire wide blue area here, there's no new cases. On the 5th, Wuhan Health Commission advises citizens to wear masks again, and the China CDC activated level two emergency response. On the 7th, they confirmed that that virus that they had discovered was in fact responsible for the disease and that disease became known as NCIP. Here's various reports that came out around that time. No evidence of human to human transmission, no medical staff infected, not as deadly as SARS. New York Times again, no evidence of human to human transmission. Xinhua, no medical staff infected, no clear human to human evidence. If we assume that the one single report before this that comes from this website that doesn't share its sources, if we assume that that's not true, then these reports are correct. There's no scientific evidence of these things yet. During this period of time that there are no new cases, this is when things seem to slow down. It's mostly lab work. January 10th, we had our first death and Dr. Lee started showing symptoms, but he didn't go to the hospital. They get the genome sequence to the WHO, PCR regions arrive in Wuhan, so rolling out better testing, and a study comes out, symptom-free transmission might be possible. But now that study's been challenged, so now we're not really sure if it's true or not. On the 12th, Dr. Lee checked into the hospital, but he tested negative for the virus. The Wuhan Health Commission says, human-to-human -human transmission is possible. This is on the 15th of January. And look at what happens next. This is the beginning of a huge, huge response. Wuhan starts rolling out infrared thermometers to airports, railway stations, bus stations, and passenger terminals. The cases started going up. And all this huge response that we see here is all gonna start now. These two, nurse being infected, medical staff being infected, these are from the same one source that doesn't list their sources that says that this happened. So I can't confirm it. If these were true, then this could be considered much stronger evidence or even proof of human to human transmission. However, I can't confirm those. 
And these happen after the Wuhan Health Commission already says that it's possible. Here we have the infamous banquet in Wuhan in which thousands of people were invited to eat together. Human to human transmission was already declared possible just a few days before that. As these infrared thermometers are rolling out across Wuhan, everything starts getting put into motion by the government. And you can't see some of the items here because most of these are just telling you when something began. You don't see all the planning and the implementation and the meetings and the logistics and all that stuff. That's all happening right here. That's happening. As soon as they saw that it is human-human transmissible, that's when everything starts to really kick into gear. Flu treatment at all hospitals for all flu symptoms in Wuhan is made free. That's to encourage people to go in. They open a specialized command center for epidemic control. A famous expert named Dr. Zhong is sent to Wuhan. This is like a publicity thing, but he actually is an expert. And they determined that there are three strains total, possibly earlier than this point, but definitely by this point they had known that the virus actually has three strains, not just one. At the 22nd of January, Wuhan requires masks in public, and then the next day, Wuhan is quarantined. Provinces start declaring level one emergency. Most of Hubei is quarantined. Domestic film releases are canceled. Wuhan transportation shuts down. Also, they started constructing this massive hospital in Wuhan. The next day, even more provinces declare level one emergency. Tourist sites begin shutting down. Cinemas shut down. Beijing, Shanghai residents are urged not to return home from holidays until 14 days. The next day, January 25th, Hong Kong declares an emergency. 1,700 medical staff are sent to Wuhan and the Politburo meets. The Politburo is the top level of all the government here in China. And they say, party committees and governments at all levels should take the novel coronavirus outbreak prevention and control as the top priority of their work. This is the entire government mobilizing towards something. The second hospital starts getting built. The next day, schools in Beijing are ordered to stay closed. I'm just using Beijing. This was actually happening all across the country. Vaccine development begins in China. The spring festival gets extended, so less people come home. Interprovincial buses and trains start to shut down. Wildlife trade is banned. Nationwide use of monitoring stations is now required. One day, all this stuff in one day. The next day, Nature Magazine describes China's response as swift and decisive. Baby Medical Center opens the 28th on the 29th. This is also the day that the eight doctors were essentially acquitted and the government released a statement that essentially said it was trying to learn from the mistakes of the case of Dr. Lee and these other doctors. The 30th is when Dr. Lee actually tests positive for the virus. He's been in the hospital this whole time. So that and other evidence told us that tests can fail several times. In fact, five times you can fail the test, don't have the virus, then the sixth time they find actually you do have the virus, which is really scary. This is also the same day that the WHO declares a public health emergency of international concern. The China-Japan Friendship Hospital on this day said that reinfection might be possible. Very scary as well. Most interprovincial travel is banned. Even hiring a car in between provinces is banned. And down here, we can see that this whole time, nationwide restrictions on groups and communities are rolling out. Everyone in mainland China is affected by this. Every community has some restrictions, every store, public area, everything. It's affecting literally everything in China. And that all started around here. The 1st of February is when the virus was found in feces. The 2nd of February, all movie and TV production is completely shut down. The 3rd of February, the first hospital that they're building opens. The 6th of February, the next hospital opens in Wuhan. And it's determined that the incubation period may have a max of 24 days. And the rest of this timeline is not complete. This is just a few events that are happening now. Earlier I showed you when SARS was reported relative to when this was reported. Now I'm going to show you the end of SARS in this timeline. Three months after the first case, that's when SARS was reported to the WHO. This is the equivalent time that SARS was declared contained. And this is the equivalent time of when SARS outbreak was declared over. 
So if we zoom out, we can really see how far out that is. When people say that this is slower than SARS, I don't know what they're talking about. So overall, this looks very, very fast to me. When we look at the blue range here in which there was no cases, this seems to be the least activity. So if you wanted to criticize this level of activity in the blue, someone might say, well, there was no new cases, so maybe they were seeing what happens. But I can definitely see that things could have been more aggressive in this area. Keeping in mind that the green are proactive things, this looks like essentially two periods of high activity. The initial discovery, followed by a lull while there was no cases, followed by a storm of activity. And I couldn't even put all the stuff in here. There's just too much. But this area here, I mean, this is the entire country being affected in every single way. So not perfect. To me, this looks extremely, extremely aggressive, extremely productive. Possible criticisms if these unsourced reports of nurses being infected early on are correct, then that obviously should have been taken as a sign of human to human transmission. And that could have saved a lot of lives. However, I'm not able to verify that. Honestly, I don't see much else that a country can do beyond this. I mean, look at this timeline. Discovered, alerted, passed up, passed up, passed up, reported, 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 investigation. Chinese public starts to become aware. CCTV, CCTV, warnings to hospital. These days right here, this first week, to me, is absolutely shocking how fast they moved, to be honest with you. Now, in hindsight, we can argue that they should have been more aggressive. They could have declared a health emergency the day that they found out, for example. That may have saved a few days. They could have done many things. They could have quarantined Wuhan the second that they found one. Who knows where we would be if that's what they did. But I do know that what they did do, to me, it seemed extremely, extremely productive and proactive. So this is why when I look at the timeline of what China's doing, I'm sorry, I just can't get on board with you guys who think that this is super slow and neglectful. To me, this looks extremely aggressive, as I've said. This timeline, obviously, as we discover new things, will change. I'm not guaranteeing that it's 100% perfect. I did all the research for this myself with a little bit of help from my supporters, but there's always a chance something will be off here or there. If you think I'm missing something, let me know. Rather than endlessly saying things that aren't true in comments about how everybody was too slow and neglected and everything, we should be focusing on facts. And we should be focusing on the facts about how to get people treated and how to save lives, how to support those people that are actually doing something about this. That's what we should be focusing on. So thanks, everybody. See ya.